Hi, my name is Christian Meisel. In this webinar, I will show you how you can easily perform data analytics on historical tick data in a matter of seconds, directly in the cloud. After an introduction on the use cases and the underlying technology, followed by a brief explanation on the workflow, I will demonstrate a few analytics to you. Modern financial companies are increasingly utilizing big data to aid their analytics and decision making be it for alpha-seeking quantitative analysis, data science, or compliance reporting activities, financial data, and especially TIC data, is at the heart of the business. TIC history data primarily serves the use cases of the front and middle office. Front office use cases include quant research, creating trading algorithms, identifying trading signals, backtesting trading strategies, data science, etc. The middle office needs it to perform transaction cost analysis and comply with regulations. Finally, academic research and market surveillance are a few other use cases for tick history data. A challenge with tick history is that the data sets are quite large. They require significant time to download between hosted databases and customer premises, as well as large and reliable storage space, and powerful computing resources to analyze. All of these imply significant investments in data centers and their day-to-day -day management. Due to these constraints, customers often restrict themselves to suboptimal usage of the available data universe. Let us now see how, by leveraging new technologies, you can shift away from this traditional data warehouse model to a new one that delivers some very interesting advantages. Google's Cloud Enterprise Data Warehouse is becoming well known. There is no point in covering it in any detail here. What is noteworthy is that, apart from being an interesting data storage solution, it also has a built-in data analytic engine called BigQuery. BigQuery allows you to analyze large data sets directly in the cloud. As there is no need to transfer and manage the data, performance is high and the solution cost-effective. Queries can be submitted using different means, including a graphical user interface, a command line tool, and an API. Queries use SQL, a familiar and powerful industry standard query language. Refinitiv Tick History is an archive of historical tick data drawn from our real-time networks. It covers global data across all asset classes, with more than 80 million active and 900 million retired instruments, from 1996 till now. It includes over-the-counter and exchange-traded instruments from more than 500 trading venues and third-party contributors, as well as unique data sources such as TradeWeb. With this data, you can build and backtest trading strategies, perform quantitative research and analysis, and meet your compliance obligations, including TCA, market surveillance, and MIFID II. It uses a standardized naming convention based on RIC symbology, that's the Reuters Instrument Code, and it provides third-party industry symbologies for cross-referencing. Tech history is big data. 4 terabytes of data are added daily to our database that currently exceeds 5 petabytes. Refinitive Tick History has been available for a while on the Datascope Select platform, which provides on-demand data delivery through a web-based graphical user interface or a powerful REST API. But now, Refinitive Tick History is also available on Google Cloud. Thanks to new technologies like those from Google, we changed the data analysis paradigm. We got rid of the data transfer bottleneck and shifted the burden of storage, management and computing power to the cloud. We created tables containing normalized tick history data on a per venue basis and partitioned them by day. We populated them with historical data and update them daily. This is brand new. Our initial offering has 10 years of history for a subset of venues. We will extend the coverage and depth of history in the future. This is a real game changer. Now you can query tick history data directly in Google BigQuery. You can focus on the data rather than on the logistics. You can reduce costs, gain time and deliver better results much faster. Let me show this in action to you. 
I shall simply use the Google Cloud Platform Console. I have logged in using a Google ID that is entitled for Refinitive Tick History, which is a requirement to be able to access the data. I first select the gcprefinitive.com organization and then open the Refinitive project called DBD SDLC Pod. Then I go to the BigQuery menu. and pin the project to my own. Now I can examine the tick history data and run queries on it from within my own BigQuery project. Opening the project in the left menu, I see all the datasets that my account is entitled to. The name is in the format venue underscore view. The venue is the data source. Most of the time this is an exchange. There are two views, normalized, which is for tick data, in other words, quotes, trades, etc. And normalized level 2, which is for market depth. The market depth view is only available for markets where such data exists. The number of levels of order book depth varies on a per exchange basis. To analyze data, I first need to understand its schema. So let us start by looking at the normalized ticks, which are for quotes, trades, corrections, auctions and market conditions. As an example, let us do this for the London Stock Exchange, LSE. We see all the field names and their types, which will be useful when we query the data. Now let us do the same for market depth data. The number of levels in the order book depends on the venue. And here we see that the London Stock Exchange has 10 levels. Now that we have found the data and understood the schema, we can move on to interrogate it using structured query language queries, in other words, SQL. You can type the SQL commands directly in the query window. Let us start by simply selecting a few quotes. We use the standard SQL dialect, We select a few fields. And limit the results to a single instrument and day. We are only interested in quotes. We shall sort them by timestamp and limit the size of the result set. As you see, the query is self-explanatory. After running it, we see the results. Now let us select trades. Depending on the analysis we want to perform on the data, we might want to filter some of it out, for instance, records containing null values. Or data that may be irrelevant for your analysis, for instance, previous day, auction, off book, and closing trades. We can filter these using the qualifiers field. Note that qualifiers depend on the data venue and might have evolved through time, so the filters may have to vary as well. If you do this, validate it with a data expert. The results can easily be exported 
for further treatments. We have seen how to retrieve data using simple SQL queries. Now let us go one step further and analyze the data. There are many use cases for this, as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Let us start by calculating several statistics on quotes. The SQL count function tells us how many quotes there were, which is an indication of demand and liquidity. The min and max functions used on the prices enable us to detect large price swings, which are important indicators of opportunity or risk. We can further refine the calculations by creating percentage variations using simple calculations. We can also calculate averages. Let us do this for all instruments on the London Stock Exchange for a specific day and filter out quotes with null values or quotes that have specific qualifiers we are not interested in. We group the results by RIC and sort them by number of quotes to focus on finding liquidity. The entire set of ticks, representing nearly 12 gigabytes of data, is retrieved and all calculations performed in only 4.9 seconds for more than 5,600 instruments that were quoted on that day. This is quite powerful. Let us now run some analytics on trades and calculate some typical benchmarks such as VWAP, total and average volume, minimum and maximum prices and more. We shall do this again for all LSE instruments for an entire day and apply some filters to remove data that we are not interested in. Again, the results are delivered very quickly. Let us see another example which is summarizing data in bars. These will be calculated on the fly from the tick data. The first part of the query will retrieve all trades. We group data into bars by creating a set of bar time from the date time. Obviously, you can modify these examples to create any bar width you might need. For a change, let us limit our results to two RICs, Vodafone and Bank of Cyprus Holdings. We set our date time range and our filters. Then we work on this data set to find the high and low prices here, the open and close, the first and last trade timestamps in the bar, and calculate the VWAP here. Then we get the number of trades, average price, volume and turnover here. And finally, we display the results. The code is a bit more involved, but runs very fast. Let us look at the final example, which is comparing a trade execution to the market. Let us say we traded Vodafone on the 4th of September 2019 at 10 minutes and 30 seconds past 2 at a price of 157.4. How does that price compare to the market at that point in time? This query will compare our trade to all those that happened in that particular minute and calculate some statistics. We see there were 19 trades with prices ranging from 157.38 to 157.44 with a VWAP of 157.42. Our trade at 157.4 was very slightly beneath the VWAP and we also see that 52% of trades were higher priced than ours. 
Thanks to these numbers, we now have a clear view of how our trade is positioned. This is only the beginning. In a similar way, you can build many other analytics based on quotes, trades or market depth data, calculate your own benchmarks, compare prices, identify instruments exhibiting interesting behavior, and much more. We have seen how easy it is to do this and how gigabytes of data can be analyzed in a matter of seconds. As all the requests rely entirely on SQL, you don't need any other skills to create powerful analytics in a very short time. You can run them in the Google console like we did here or through one of the Google BigQuery libraries to interface with your own applications. If you would like to dig further, you will find more examples of SQL queries as well as tips on optimization and more technical details in the Tick History in Google BigQuery tutorial set. Thank you for watching this webinar.